Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. The show is uh, regularly broadcast every Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Central Time, but this is a special edition of Encompass Live being done on Tuesday. Uh, for those of you watching recording, doesn't matter to you, but um, because this year, uh, once every, what is it, seven years, the 4th of July, the United States Independence Day falls on a Wednesday. So we, along with many libraries across the country, are closed tomorrow. So we bump our show uh, to a different day so we can still have it. And this week we are doing it on a special Tuesday edition of Encompass Live. Um, as I said, the show is usually broadcast on Wednesdays. Uh, we do record the show every week. So if you're unable to join us on our when we do broadcast live, you can always go to our website and watch our archives. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can find all of those recordings and archives. Both the live show and our recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So um, please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone who you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. We have quite a variety of things in the show here. The Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, all types of libraries in the state, so we cover everything. Uh, public, academic, K-12 schools, special, museum, correctional. If you're a library or have a library, we probably have something for you. So you'll find a really wide range of topics on our um, archives in our upcoming shows. And we do a mixture of things on the show, a mixture of types of things, sometimes for book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, um, basically anything we think that may be of interest to libraries. And that really is our only criteria for the show, is it something to do with libraries. That's about it. Uh, sometimes we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do present to um, episodes on things that are specific to what we're doing here through the commission, but we also do bring in guest speakers. And that's what we have this morning on the line remotely with us today from, where are we in, Can, Laverne, in Kentucky? Uh, Laverne, Tennessee. Tennessee, oh, I knew it was, I, I should've written that down. <laughs> That's all uh, Kevin, good. Yeah, I got the right area. <laughs> uh, Kevin Davenport, who is um, from Ingram Library Services, um, is going to be sharing with us ways that you can make your collection development uh, easier, hopefully. So I will um, hand over, just hand over to you, Kevin. This is actually, actually, I should say, this is a session that was requested. Um, here in Nebraska, we have regional library systems that are consultants for different four regions in the state. And one of our uh, system directors, Denise Harders, did ask about having this on the show. She's had very uh, many uh, questions from libraries in her area, Central Plains part of Nebraska, about how do I know what to buy? I'm, I'm new. I don't have a clue. I've never been trained in this. Um, I only work 10 hours a week, what do I do? And she said that, you know, she in, helped invite and get Kevin on the show to help us figure out how to do that. <laughs> so I will just hand over to you, Kevin, to go ahead and take it away. All right, cool. Thank you so much, and thanks everybody for joining us here. Um, the original request uh, that she had uh, asked for was uh, the Ingram HINT program, which stands for High Interest New Titles. Correct. And, um, this is, I um, don't have this on my demo account, so I'm starting out in the Nebraska uh, Library Commission account, which does have this on it. Um, so if you have an Ingram account, if you'll go to the, the list area. And then this program runs every Wednesday. If, it, if there is anything that, that falls within the, the parameters, then it will show up. And basically, and let me squeeze this over to the side here a little bit so that you can see everything. Can everybody see my screen okay? Hopefully. Yep, I'm seeing it on mine. Um, if okay, anyone's good. having any you know, issues with seeing it, you can always you can make that his display um, full screen if it helps you out on your monitor. Um, but yep, I've got it. Um, looks good on mine. And also, I took off my camera webcam, so your screen is now the only thing that anybody needs to worry about seeing. Okay. All right, very good. Um, so when that program runs, and it runs every week, and as you can see, there are lots of these, and they will hang out um, for a while, for about three months before they move to the archive section. But um, uh, the parameters to get to this list basically um, are we um, run a, uh, a query through our system, and uh, these are the top 25 or so 
Uh, sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, just depending on what's um, what's coming out for for prepub. These are all prepub titles, and uh, these are where we have significant demand from our other library customers and only our other library customers uh, that the account has not yet placed an order with Ingram for. So that's how these titles get here. This is significant demand by our other public libraries that you do not have on order with Ingram or have not ordered with Ingram. And that's where these titles come from. Um, and then all you would do, uh, and there is a mixture of things in here, so it's not segregated by uh, any like adult uh, or youth or teen or juvie or anything like that. It's all kind of mingled together. Um, but you will give you a list so that you can add these to your own selection list and then place your order for it. But these are what your peers have on order uh, throughout other public libraries throughout the country. Uh, and that's basically what the, the this is and how it, how it comes to be. Um, so all you would do is just select your title. You can go into it. Uh, typically, these are street smart titles, but not always. Um, it will also give you some other things worth considering down below because you're looking at this title, you might also like these titles. And then if you have reviews enabled or you pay for reviews, they would be down here so that you can, can take a look at them. Um, but for all intents and purposes, these are what all the libraries are ordering. So this is a pretty good list to pick from um, pre-pub. All right. So that's the hint list, which doesn't take very long to explain. But um, does anybody have any questions about that? Um, let's see. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions about how to access this for yourself? Uh, you can type in the questions. Um, I think this is a good, definitely a good thing, and why Denise did mention it, that we have here in Nebraska, especially so many small and rural libraries that mm -hmm. um, the staff, as I was kind of trying to describe earlier, work part time, don't have a lot of time to go through um, lists and reviews and seeing what's good and what we should have and depend um, using this to like depend on your peers, your colleagues is a really good way, I think, to get started to try and figure out. I don't know what I need, but hey, this other these other libraries who are very similar to me um, have done these, have bought these. This is probably a good place to start. Right. Um, so that's that's the hint list. So that uh, if there it doesn't run, it runs every week, but there's not always something that matches the parameters every week. So it's um, mm -hmm. but it runs. You most get a list most every week. Um, typically in the months where there's less uh, new titles coming, obviously you will see less of these, uh, and there will, um, you know we try and limit it to so that you're not overwhelmed with um, things that you don't that you don't have, so that's why we kind of take the top uh, cream of the crop there, mm -hmm. um, so to make life easier. Um, the other part of this, um, um, I've got a couple of things. Uh, we have curated lists in iPage, so that's done by our collection development department. These are all degreed librarians, and they manage these lists all the time. So if you go to Browse, and then over to uh, high interest categories under Ingram lists and picks. Uh, just click into that. And then these are broken down by adult, uh, teen, children's, K through 12, and then the award, uh, award and noteworthy. Um, so there are a lot of things that live here. Um, adult, young adult crossovers, African American resources, graphic novels, which is a, a, a challenge for everyone I know. Um, so I'll just kind of talk through this a little bit if anybody's got any questions just sing out. Um, when you click into one of these, it's going to take you, usually it will take you to a sub list. So it's going to give you the recent past and a lot of times um, if they've, it looks like they haven't gotten into updating this one again, but it's going to give you the most recent thing from 525. So assume the next one should be coming up within the next uh, next little bit here. African American resources. Um, all of these are just going to take you to a list, usually new and forthcoming, or a backlist um, for some backlist or things that you would want to reorder or order if you probably didn't have. And again, you would just 
select these and add them to your own selection list and then place your order order for these titles. But these have already been curated um, and these are things that are relevant uh, for folks. Um, graphic novels I know are especially troublesome for folks and we have an awesome uh, graphic novel person, Jenny McCluskey, and she goes through and when she creates these lists, she adjusts the age range for these folks um, down here rather than being um, from zero to 99 for these graphic novels. She puts them in the correct age group so that you, when you order from these lists that she's curated, you can feel comfortable knowing that these are for the correct age group that you're that you're looking for um, so that is great I think that's definitely important um, there's so many different levels of graphic novels now <laughs> and yes. from the ones appropriate for young children teens adult and it is very important yes to make sure you know exactly what's going on in the story and in the artwork sometimes it's um, and they can be you know, confusing some of this yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, certainly. So that's a that's a great thing, and she's broken that down for everybody in their their appropriate age ranges and groups. Um, large print replenishment. Spanish resources. If you have call for Spanish resources, uh, summer reading clubs. Um, all of these are going to take you into other lists that you can select from things that are that you've either had requests for or things that you know you need to round out your your collection with um, so oh that summer reading one, that, that's great that you, you have that now I see mm -hmm. here you've got the ones for 2018 which is for this year that is um, correct yep. which a lot of school a lot of the libraries are in the middle of doing that right now um, yep. running their summer reading programs do you have any idea how soon there would start with lists for next year's topic Oh, that's a good question, and I don't actually know the answer to when they start with those. Uh, I yeah. can um, find out for you. It looks like that they created these lists. Yeah, these don't look like February. 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 Which, is, so, which is great, yeah. So I'm going to guess that they start sometime in mm -hmm. December or January. Mm -hmm. That's good timing for libraries. You have to get on top of this and get their books ordered before their programs, you know, start in this mm -hmm. summer, July and August. Yeah. Right. Um, so they they award noteworthy. We've got our own podcast, which is sometimes useful for uh, not necessarily for collection development part. I'll be deviate, but uh, they've got. Uh, Things uh, that are relevant and useful, these podcasts are only about 10 minutes long or so, so uh, most everybody's found them useful, so you might want to check those out. Um, then it goes back to uh, all these other things. The high interest titles when in each category are going to take you to um, another set of lists, um, current, recent, past, um, and the distant past we usually these lists run two to three months ahead so um, it's a rolling three or four months here so that you can see what was done in March and what's going on right now and then we'll update this and it'll everything will rotate to the right there up these lists for August they're going to give you things to choose from and select so um, this will give you a more narrow uh, pond to fish in so that you know that um, you can pick and choose out of a, a more refined bucket of uh, titles so that they're more relevant to uh, your your patrons rather than having to weed through the whole internet. <laughs> um, that's pretty much this uh, collection development. It's kind of got it for each section. Um, they've got the K through 12, which would take you, uh, it's got the common core standards here, and it's broken down by grade, stories, drama, language arts, all of this. And it's just going to give you a list here so that you can select and then place your order from, from when that, within that. All right. Any questions about any of that? 
Uh, so yeah, type in any questions you might have onto the questions section. Oh, I see you have one there, a an award noteworthy for the Great American Read. Mm -hmm. For PBS, yep. that PBS is doing. I know that's a big thing that we are trying to promote and getting more um, libraries involved in. So that I assume would be all the hundred titles that are in there. If you, let's see. It looks like there are 276 hmm. products okay. um, from probably all over the country, if I had to guess. Uh -huh. And of course, um, any of these lists that we're looking at here, you oh, can... Oh, I see. There's 100 titles, but I remember the Great American Read does series um, as one item in as their one. list. And of course, here you'd have like all the Harry Potter books listed individually and all the right. Chronicles of Narnia listed individually. So that's why the number comes out bigger. Yeah. 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 Um, any of these lists and I page, you can search within these results to narrow. You can hide compilations and reproductions. But in these curated lists, you're really not going to see any of those. Um, but you can also refine by any of these items over here uh, pub date binding, um, format, supplier, awards, citation, Dewey, uh, Ingram category, which is kind of an internal BISAC, uh, language, if there's more than one language, um, any, any of those things to help you narrow down if you're looking for something specific through here. Uh, when we, uh, when you're looking in that page, when I do searches, I've got all these sorted by Ingram demand. So that puts the highest demand items at the top. Hmm. So that, just so that you know that these are uh, kind of in descending order of demand. The most popular. Right. Yeah. Of, of everything that we've got right there. So um, that is nice. our curated list under browse high interest categories. All right. All right, cool. If you have any questions about anything, anybody on the line, or if you want to see any of these lists, have them dive into the, any of them, just pipe in, type in your comment or question, yep. and we can do that. Happy to do that. Uh, the Ingram Insights is the hint list as well, so that's here. That's another way to get into them. And they're broken down by different different uh, categories there for you to try and make this as easy as possible because we all know that the one thing librarians have less of than money even is time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. Um, and then the um, last uh, part that um, we've got to, to help you guys um, is uh, our standing order or new title notification program basically is what we we like to call it now. So if you hover over orders and then go into standing order programs, this is going to give you a list of programs that you can set up profiles within. Um, and I am actually going to take a second and switch out of this because I don't want to play in the Nebraska Library Commission account. Uh, let me switch to my training account. And then we'll go to standing order programs. So if you have, if you've enrolled in any of these, it would tell you that you're enrolled. Uh, you can have multiple enrollments in each of these. And let's see what would be one that I haven't set up recently here for. So we'll just add another adult author. So when you click into one of these, it's going to take you to a screen that looks like this. And it's going to edit, and it's going to really look like that. Um, so you can call it uh, whatever you want. Uh, the standard is adult author. Um, it's going to default to report only, which means that you're going to uh, iPages, once you've got this set up, it's going to send you a list and email you to let you know that that list is is ready for you to take a look at. And nothing's going to happen with that until you place those titles or 
anything that you select out of that list onto you, into another list so that you can place an order for it. Um, if you set these up and then you decide that you're ordering most of these items and only taking a few, if anything's off of it, you could set them up as an automatic shipment, which means that um, like on the adult author, it runs on the 1st and the 15th of the month. So when you get the list on the 1st, you've got until the fort end of the 14th um, to edit that list. So if you anything that's left on the list at the end of uh, the 14th, then would automatically be ordered for you. So that can be a time saver if you've got this set correctly and you know exactly what you want. Uh, so you can just edit out anything you don't want, and then iPage will place the order for you when you're ready. Um, so you can make that adjustment here. Um, if you have um, templates or grids that you use, they can uh, these lists can come in pre-gridded uh, with the templates so that your uh, fund codes, location codes can be here, um, quantities can be here. Uh, and then you would make your selections for authors here. The bolded authors are uh, well-known folks that everybody uh, is knows and wants. Uh, there's a button to select all bolded authors if you'd like. And then uh, you could have a profile for all your bolded authors and then some for your lesser known authors as well. Um, when you make your selections, you just update your page, review and continue. And then you'll have your list of authors that you've selected. Just check to make sure those are the authors that you want. You can adjust those. Um, you can delete anything that you accidentally got there uh, by selecting it and then clicking the delete button. And then you would select your binding type here. Um, this should default to hold, but you can change that to release. The difference is hold means the title is going to act like a normal back order, so it's not going to push out on its own. And for smaller and mid-sized libraries, that's going to save you on, on freight. Um, so it's going to ride with other orders. If you um, do release and you've got a Street Smart affidavit on file with us, then that title would automatically go with any other Street Smart titles that we had at the time that were committed and could go and they would ship all together for you. Um, so put your quantities here for whichever uh, formats you're looking for, then click update, then enroll, and it's going to give you a chance to enroll there. One last time to confirm, and then you're done. And it'll give you an email saying that you've done, you've entered this program or you've done a modification to this program. And you can do that for all of these programs that we have here. So I, I like that it does use that option of being able to, so to speak, I guess, bundle things together and wait until you have a bunch of things to be shipped. Yes. And then uh, rather so that to save on shipping costs. That's correct. Yep. Um, there are some account settings that we can do for that as well so that uh, we can set a minimum ship quantity or a minimum dollar amount, uh, retail mm -hmm. dollar amount before before shipping if those things are, are more relevant. Uh, but, um, um, you know, it's always a, a, a fine line between cost savings and getting the latest and greatest thing, you know, immediately. So, of course. Um, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> um, but how, 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 what, how, how much are your, your citizens banging, not banging down your doors trying to get certain titles from you? <laughs> right. Because <laughs> they know when it's supposed to come. Mm -hmm. Um if you have all of these set like you would like and you go through, you could probably spend maybe 10 or 15 minutes uh, each month going through here and editing these things and, um, you know, taking care of what you, you need to take care of without a great deal of time is what my collection development tell, folks tell mm -hmm. me. So uh, I am not a librarian per se, but I've, I've spent a lot of time in libraries, um, mm -hmm. but that's what the, they say if you have these set like you want them and um, it doesn't take very long to um, to um, take care of them each month um, 
if you have uh, multiple programs here, some of these titles do cross over multiple programs. So um, you just before when you add any of these items to one of your lists, you would just need to make sure that and check for duplications uh, so that you don't um, you know don't inadvertently get more units of the same title that you than you wanted. Uh, but it's it really shouldn't shouldn't take more than you know 15 minutes tops they say so um, and you can do that for uh, nonfiction continuations series all those things that travel continuations that have to be done but nobody really wants to spend much time on because they're not much fun um, and same thing for youth author illustrators author teen there's an easy reader. Um, this is a new one for us, picture and board books. Um, so that basically gives you um, the board books. A gives you ten books a month. Um, picture books A gives you twenty-five, and picture books B gives you like the first tier of picture books and then the second tier of picture books to make life easier for everybody. So that would just be a whatever most recently was put published. Right. Titles. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That's a, that's a little bit different. Uh, and that would look like, let me just get over here and I will show you those lists would show up uh, from in your list home page under the Ingram tab if you have tabs enabled uh, if not they're going to show up in your just in your active list um, under the Ingram tab then um, these items would uh, would show here and graphic novels those are just some things uh, pictures and board books so go into your search result view this would show you all of these 60 titles that showed up and that would give you a chance to to take a look at them so this would be taking a look at it be what before it's going to be shipped to you to see what's coming these are a report only so these okay. are usually two to three months pre-pub okay um so in order to uh in the report only mode uh, in order to get these items you would actually have to move this to a list um, to to place so you could actually place the order right okay okay so you would just select it or select all of them if that's what you were you were interested in doing um, select a couple here and then scroll down to the bottom and then add selected titles or you can add all titles to mm. a list or you can create a new list from here as well so that you could go ahead and, and get ready to place your order. So those report only lists, uh, the titles always have to be moved to a new list in order to for you to place an order. For actually purchasing. Right, for actually cool. purchasing. Yeah. Um, and then in the, in the automatic shipment part, um, you would just edit, take away anything you didn't want, and then it would automatically order those items for you when, when it um, at the appropriate time. Right. All right, we do have a question, and I'm not sure if that's mm -hmm. what you're kind of getting into here already. Um, someone wants to know what is the fastest way to access your own selection lists. Um, the fastest way to access your own selection list, there's a couple of different ways to do that. Um, there is a, typically there's a recently added or edited list uh, here, and you can change what you see here. All non-program lists are lists that you create, basically. Uh, so, and that's going back to like your quote-unquote home page of your account when you're in there. That's correct. That's so that's, yeah, okay. that's from the home page. Um, if you were to uh, do that, then um, if you click into it, then it will take you directly into that list. Um, the only thing about that is, is that takes you into uh, the other way to do this, and let me explain the difference here. So the, probably the fastest way to do that is click on lists, and then just make sure that your display shows all lists in your folder. 
so that you can see everything. Make sure you're in your active tab. And then that would that would give you your list. When you go to view these lists, you would always want to look at these under the search result view. The first way that I showed you to get into that takes you into this view mode, which is an older view. And eventually this will go away, but the mm -hmm. search results view is an enhanced view, and there's a lot more functionality here. So I would probably recommend going to list and then selecting and going to the search result view. But uh, using this, you can add items um, by uh, copying and pasting items here. So if you're on a web page, like a review web page, you've got a lot of titles and text all intermingled, um, you can mm -hmm. just copy and paste the whole thing here and it will scrub out the text so you don't have to waste your life trying to select all those uh, ISBNs. And then click Add, and it will add that to your list and scrub the text out of it for you. Nice. OK. Um, you can also upload a file as well. Uh, if you've got a, a text file or an Excel file, uh, you can add that uh, as well. OK. Um, you can check for duplicates, you can place an order, check for stock here, you can price this list. Um, one of the useful things about this is is that uh, there's the trash can in this enhanced view, so you can always delete titles from here really easily. And then if you show all edit options on a list, um, it's going to give you an expanded view. So it gives you the option to copy or move a title. You can put notes here, so if you order this for Mrs. Smith, then when it comes in, um, that would show, so you would know who who that was for. Um, and then as you work through this list, inevitably, um, more than likely, if you're like most folks, uh, somebody's going to bother you before you get done with this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> um, so as you're working through the list and you get done with each one in the expanded view, if you click Hide Edit Options, it's going to squeeze that back down, so then if when you are halfway through your list and you have to go away, then 30 minutes to an hour later when you make it back, where was I? Well, you stopped right here. You would know the last expanded one was the one you were working on, and you can proceed from there. Just a little help me pick me up there. Okay. So um, that. Mm -hmm. Just shows you all of that stuff. And then you would be able to do finish whatever you needed to do and place your order for your list or have it set up for uh, your next um, next month's order or however far in advance you work. Um, you can uh, create new lists from here. You can merge lists. Uh, and you can recover deleted lists as well. So um, if you have tabs enabled, you mm -hmm. can create other folders um, and that's a user defined view so that um, if you were the only person uh, when you log in when you add things to a folder that you've created you're only going to see that in your view everybody else is going to see it under the active folder rather than in the folder you've moved it to um, and that's about it as far as collection development type things but I'm happy to expand on anything that anybody has has any questions about um, uh, the question? The person asked that question about the list says thank you. That thanks. That was that helped showing off showing how to do all that and how to access them mm -hmm. all and everything. Okay, excellent. Uh, and you can sort them differently as well too. So if you you want to do that, um, you can also just to finish up on that topic. You can also search selection list either by the list name or last edited created edited or created by, contains a specific ISBN or EAN, uh, and you can search the note field. So if you don't remember, but you know <laughs> which book you ordered from Mrs. Smith, <laughs> mm -hmm. but you know that you did order one from Mrs. Smith, you can search the note mm -hmm. field. Whatever you've put into there, yeah. Right, right. Uh, so it would allow you to search all of that in the static search bar there. Um, Now I, I do have a question. This these um this sure. iPage accounts that you've you've logged into, you had this is one I mean I know this is a training one, you had a commission one. How does a library get set up with one of these to begin with? Mm -hmm. Having these accounts. 
So if you don't have an account with Ingram, then you would go to um, ingramcontent.com, and then on that first page there towards the bottom of the screen, um, there should be a big button called Getting Started. So you just click on that, and then it would ask you for an email address, which is kind of going to be your username, and then you would set up a password. And once you do that, you haven't created an account, but it's going, the system is going to send you an email uh, with a link so you can uh, access our secure servers, and then you can finish filling out the required information that we need to set up an account, uh, mm -hmm. which would be your state tax exempt form and um, uh, your um, um, any other information that they're that they're looking for. Um, Shipping info, and, billing info. Things like that. Right. right. That's going to be, uh, you know, who to bill, physical delivery address, contact mm -hmm. name, email address, you know, specific things like that. And then um, once uh, we have all that, then we can start setting up your account. Um, if there's processing that you want uh, for the account, you would um, fill that information out there as well. So we can, can do, um, you know, set it all up at the same time. Um, then at some point in time, I would be in touch with you because I'm the inside sales rep for your area um, saying, hey, it looks good, you know, the, or you need one more thing uh, that they're looking for in order to, to move forward. Uh, once they got all the information and got you set up, you'd get an email with an account number uh, it would with a link that would take you to iPage to set your iPage password. And then you would be able to log in and iPage, and you would be able to see the things I've been showing you here for your account. Mm -hmm. Great. So it's all all just you can set it up yourself online. Don't if and boom, boom, boom. It's kind of done. <laughs> yep. Um, it is not instantaneous like opening like an Amazon account or something like that, but it is relatively yeah. swift. It's a little more in depth, yeah. And um, something I'll also mention while you're talking about setting up that the um, account. Uh, and I'm going to show this also later at the end of, um, well, after you're done with your session here. Um, mm -hmm. Through the Nebraska Library Commission, we do have discounts um, for yes. um, Ingram ser Library Services purchases. Um, yep, that is correct. Right. For public libraries and K-12 schools um, in Nebraska, you can get a discount on anything. We've got a deal with them for this. Uh, and it depends on what you're getting, and I'll show you the page later, a different percent off depending on what it is that you're ordering. Mm -hmm. um, now, to be part of this, it's it's just it's, this is just like a blanket thing that covers any libraries in Nebraska, and once they sign up, that goes into effect, or do they have to do something special to make sure that you guys know? When you are onboarding, there is a question there. Are you part of a consortium or an agreement? And there's where you that you would plug that in at that point in time so that we would know. Otherwise, we we don't – they don't have – they don't go looking through that for everybody. Right. So, um, so then you could say yes and say Nebraska Library Commission, and then you'd right. get those discounts. Yep. Yep, and those are the discounts there it is, right yep. there. All right, and then um, basically the freight is if you have more than 20 or um, if you have 20 or more items shipping from a distribution center, you would qualify for free freight. Um, if you ship less than 20 units in a shipment, you're charged a flat $5 shipping fee. All right, so 19 or, or less, then you would pay just a flat $5. Okay. And, and there's and pretty good it. discounts there, depending on, as you can see there, what you're getting, what you're purchasing. Um, yep. So. Um, really Excel, Spoken Word Audio, most of those titles are at 45%. Um, mass Market uh, and Trade Hardcover, um, those are those are really good discounts. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't say anything here about it, but this is standard for uh, video games. If anybody orders video games, uh, there's a 5% discount on video games. Um, lots of different ways to order. If you have um, uh, EDI, we can set up to do EDI for you. Um, so you can use your acquisitions module. To, uh, to order things, mm -hmm. um, but I'm happy 
happy to answer any questions any, anybody has about mm -hmm. any of those those type of things. That's cool about the video games. Yeah, I was just looking at our info that we had. Uh, we don't have it specified in there either. Is that something new you're doing with the video games or just something we haven't gotten into the paperwork? <laughs> uh, it's probably, it's just standard. Uh, so okay. it's not, um, it's really, I don't think it's in the in the paperwork. I don't think they're excluded to this agreement. Um, yeah. So I'd have to, to check to be sure, but I, it, I'm pretty sure that's pretty standard all the way around. Um, the other thing uh, under the browse section here, there are videos, video games, uh, there's music. Um, the other thing uh, under gifts, games, and other items here uh, for mm -hmm. folks, um, you have a lot of things here that you possibly, anything you would find at like a Barnes & Noble or a Books A Million or a nice private bookstore would be mm -hmm. here. Uh, but the things that libraries uh, tend to or look for that I've found at other locations, uh, there are puzzles in here. Because uh, mm -hmm. I have some libraries that lend puzzles, um, and there are also yes. puppets, puppets in here. So oh, um, cool. if you're um, looking for puppets, uh, so if you need something and you don't have any earthly idea of where to go, you could also look here. <laughs> so yeah, that's good. No, Ingram is not just books. <laughs> it could be any of these things, games, and yeah. Right. So lots of lots of different things here. So um, under browse, under gifts, games, and sidelines. Um, under reports, you can see your invoiced items, your canceled items, and your open items. It will pull or drop a report, Excel report for you, so you, uh, you would know what's going on each month. And I'm trying to think of um, as far as what uh, what else to see or buy, what else. Um, the boxes in the center uh, here, you can edit what those are. So I've got this selected to trade bestsellers, hardcover fiction. Um, but if you don't want to do that, you can look at indie trade paper, uh, nonfiction oh, trade paper, New York Times, Publishers Weekly, USA Today, Top 150. You can sh change that to any of these things. Whichever ones you want it to be like reminding you about kind of. Right. So the things that are that you know everybody sees. Same thing for this box. Um, these are Ingram top demand. So this is the best sellers. You can do children's hardcover, paper deck, the fiction, hardcover, Spanish titles, any of these things, audio. Um, so if you're at a loss, these are the best sellers by by demand at Ingram. All right here. Different things there. Um, under catalog, you can select catalogs. Um, these are the things that we used to send out um, paper-wise, but everybody's getting away from that. So it's all online now. Yeah. Right. So you can can see specific things here um, in order to try and find things. You can send up for the Ingram Wire, which would. Um, give you the latest product news and trending mm -hmm. topics in your email box. Cool. Um, bulletin board talks about iPage enhancements because we're always enhancing it. And if you ever have an idea the way that iPage could be made better for not just you, but maybe for everybody, certainly let us know because some of our best enhancement enhancements have come from our customers. And I see right above there it says that you've got webinars too. Sign up for iPage webinars. Is that from yep. training or? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, if you click into uh, um, iPage webinars, that's uh, our Wednesdays with Ingram. So <laughs> that takes place every Wednesday at 1 o'clock Central Time. Um, and these are the topics that are um, being discussed. Typically, these are a little more narrow focused than what I would give you as a, like a normal live page, kind of an overview type things. These are a little more deep dive. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the thing that I recommend for everybody is select any of these that you're interested in or may even think you might be interested in and register for them. Um, it, now, Wednesday at 1 o'clock may not be a great time for you, but that's okay. Um, 
So if you don't get a chance to um, see it live, when the, once this is over, the next day it will send you an email with a link to the recorded version so that you could watch it at your convenience. That's great having those specific things, Chris, because you know, because this is a much more what we're doing today, pretty general overview of everything, and I like that you've got some of those specific topics there for people. Right, um, you know, time-saving workflow tips for uh, you know small to mid-sized libraries because it's different, you know, if depending mm -hmm. on what size you are, um, juvenile selectors, adult selectors. Um, Grids are one of those things that are really useful if you have a lot of fun codes or location codes. Uh, it's re basically an easy way to apply repetitive information very quickly so you don't have to spend, you know, valuable time doing something that can be done in one click. Um, order management, um, selecting graphic novels and story time titles, uh, always good for anybody no matter what size you are. Um, and uh, there's a specific one on new iPage uh, features and enhancements, which is changing all the time. It's a lot better now mm -hmm. than it was even three years ago when I first started here. <laughs> awesome. Um, we do have a question that just popped in. Um, they had to step away for a bit, um, which is, is a good question, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Does it cost anything to have an account with Ingram, like to get set up in the first place? Uh, it does not cost anything to have an account or open an account. We do not charge you uh, for users, so you can have unlimited users, um, and you can have multiple users on an account. Mm -hmm. It only will cost you when you actually buy, order something. That is correct. So when you order something, you are not uh, actually invoiced for that until we actually ship the material. Then you would have, um, so, uh, the way that works is um, if you had ordered with us in June, so anything that you ordered June 1st through the end of June um, would invoice in that month, but it's not due until 30 days from when you get the statement. So the statement would come out at the end of the month. So it would be due at the end of July. So it's a net 30 mm -hmm. days. Right. All right, so if you'd ordered something at the 1st of mm -hmm. July, you've got, obviously you've got a lot more than 30 days because you really got almost 60 days to, to pay. But Right, because um, of when the invoice is actually generated, right. yeah. Uh, because it's, sure. uh, the, it's not due until the statement generates. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Thank you, she says. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, um, if you happen to have a need, say you got a grant um, that you needed to spend quickly, or you um, just don't have enough time to get the, a program together, but you need a program on Holocaust or um, you know something you know specific that um, you can um, contact our collection development department. They'll ask you to fill out a small sheet that gives them the parameters of what you're looking for, uh, a budget range. They'll give you um, a generate a list of top, you know, for you that's probably somewhere between 150 to 200 percent of what you've given as a budget range, so that you can then select from a pool of things that you know that fit the bill. And that's that's a free free item. It doesn't cost anything to to do that. Nice. Okay. All right. um, Same thing for ODCs or refreshes. If anybody has opening day collections or refreshes that they need to do on a collection, we can we can do the car collection development department would be happy to handle that for you. Then okay. I think that is all that I have, unless somebody has any questions mm -hmm. or. <laughs> I rambled on. <laughs> yeah. um, no, we do have one question, but I think we'll get I'll get to that in just a second here. Um, no, this is great. I'm glad we got to see all this. You got a lot of great um, ways to do your ordering here, and I think this is something that, as Denise, who requested this session, had said, libraries just aren't sure what they can do and what's available to them. And that's mm -hmm. what's great about this is this is something it doesn't. And what I think it's great too is that it doesn't cost anything to try it out, to go in there and see 
how do these lists work? How do I, you know, use the system and figure it out and then start actually placing the orders? Right. And so I think seeing this and seeing how to how to navigate around it is great. Mm -hmm. um, so if you don't have an account, if you open an account, then when you get the account set up, uh, I would contact you to set up a time to do a webinar much like we're doing here. And then I would kind of walk you through all of this because um, there are like I've pointed out some of the things that I normally touch base on, but um, these are things that are really useful and helpful if you know they're there. But um, most of us don't have endless amounts of time to wander around poking on, uh, you know, new websites for things. <laughs> they just need to want to do what you need to do and find it and get it ordered. Um, and I kind of show everybody all these things so that uh, you don't have to to guess or wonder about what's really in here or how can I do this easier or better. So that's the that's the purpose behind all that. But I, I give everybody so usually your, a one-on-one. You'll, -on -one. you'll get your own one-on-one -on -one, uh, training once you do, for the first time, get set up with it. That is correct. Um, if anybody partners with schools, because I know sometimes libraries and schools partner together, um, we do uh, uh, schools as well for school libraries. So that their screen looks a little bit different than, than the public library screen, but uh, basically the same. And they've got the same type of information and list to pull from that's more directed towards schools. Um, so they don't, you know, uh, a lot of times they don't know what to order either. So. This is always a good, oh, sure. a good thing. All right, um, that's great. I think what I'm going to do now. Um, anybody have any uh, questions? We have one question here that I'm going to answer in a second here um, about uh, what's in the iPage. Anything they want to see in here before I pull it back? Because I want to so sh show some things on our commission website related to this. Um, you do have in the static search bar here, typically this defaults to the active titles, uh, the active database, which are the titles that you can actually order. Uh, you do have access to the extended, uh, which would include titles that are no longer in available. Um, usually you would only do that if you were trying to get back to something somebody had a question about uh, who, um, uh, what an author did or what was uh, published at what time or edition or that type of thing. Um, and then the other thing uh, to mention is there is an iKids database here to search through, and that's our certified kid-friendly database. So anything you order out of here, specifically like um, graphic novels or art books or photography books in particular, uh, if you order out of that iKids database, you won't have to send it back in shame because you can't put it out because it's not a suitable for children. <laughs> Already pre-weeded pre, pre for you for that. <laughs> yeah, right. That's correct. Awesome. All right. All right, I'm gonna, um, does somebody really ask to see anything more on here right now urgently? But as you, we said, you can always set up an account and get in there to explore it and get some more training from Kevin. I wanna pull back to my uh, library commission screen mm -hmm. to show you what we were talking about earlier about the discount through the Library Commission. So this is Library Commission's website, nlc.nebraska.gov. And uh, we have a flyout menu here with discounts um, that you can find lots of things that we do discounts through um, for our libraries through the Library Commission. Uh, you can also search our site just for the word discounts and see if you can you know, find them that way as well. And you can see here we have some group purchases of things, but this is what I was going to talk about. Databases um, and electronic resources, we have discounts for you for there. Attending conferences, different conferences around um, the country we can get discounts on, but then also books and supplies which is what we're talking about today, we at the Library Commission actually have uh, arrangements with many uh, companies out there, as you can see from this menu at the tip uh, up here, Baker and Taylor, Barnes and Noble, um, Brodard, et cetera, et cetera. But um, Ingram is right here in the middle because it's alphabetical. So you can get any of these discounts if you want to, but for the Ingram one, it'll bump you down to there. And we had seen this earlier, the same thing that you had shown, Kevin, the discounts right. that are available. Uh, and just more information about it is on here. And uh, the question we had, what Kevin had mentioned earlier, when you do go ahead and set up your account in the iPage there, one of the questions is, do you have any sort of a consortium uh, arrangement? 
And that is when right, you would right. put in, yes, the Nebraska, through the Nebraska Library Commission is the um, organization that this is done through. And then when you purchase, place your order, once you put that into there, because they won't use, as you said, Kevin, they won't, um, from the Ingram side, they don't look for people that are in the, like, Nebraska per, specifically. Right. If you don't tell us, they won't, they won't know. They won't know. Right. So there will be a question that outright says that, are you part of a consortium? And you all are on behalf of all the libraries um, in K-12 in, this, in Nebraska. We've arranged for this. So you just say, yep, Nebraska Library Commission. And then this is what the discounts that you will get on any of your future purchases through Ingram. Exactly. Yep. Uh, and as you see, this is our list of all the other ones we have too. So whenever you're ordering anything, this goes, check out all these different ones that we have here um, for books and other materials, databases as well. I just want to show you quickly, I'm not going to go through this one. As you can see, we've got a long list of different databases that we've gotten deals for and conferences. We have a page for that, uh, computers and libraries, internet librarian, web search university. Uh, we arrange with them to give discounted uh, registration rates for libraries in our state. Yeah. Um, everybody's there, including us, but uh, you know, no matter who you use now, you'd always should check us because um, everybody buys from Ingram, even our competitors. So we love them too, B&T and Amazon, they're all great. So you don't always hear that from competition, but we do love yeah. them too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're just hitting 11 a.m. Central Time here. So any last minute desperate questions anybody wants to ask, type it into your question section or let us know that you have a microphone and we can ask that. Um, so you got just another minute or so to do that. Um, any uh, last minute words of wisdom from uh, you, Kevin, that you want to share? Um, just that, uh, you know, the discounts that we give are on, uh, a, we probably give more, Ingram gives more full trade discounts on anybody, any of our competitors. So um, if you don't use more than one vendor, I would highly recommend that you mm -hmm. do so you can shop around um, yeah. and get the best deal uh, for, you know, the best bang for your buck, as it were. Um, we do carry more stock than most of our competitors as well. So um, if you have a back order list, uh, if you get an iPage account, just drop it in, check our stock. I think you'll be surprised. Um, same thing for pricing, um, especially on board books and things like that. Um, you know, drop a, a current invoice in and just see what the see what the price difference is. Um, then you know, shop where that makes the most sense for you. I'm I'm confident that. Um, um, you may not want to buy with one vendor completely, uh, but you will get the best deal by shopping around. Sure. Yeah. Doesn't hurt to look around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's also going to, I mean, you saw all the different ways that you can work with Ingram's system here and their lists and how it works. Uh, see how some of the other ones work too. You just might be more comfortable with one interface over another. You never know. Mm hmm. There's lots of reasons to make decisions, and you don't. And that's what's great about book buying at libraries and per, um, materials purchasing is you don't have to just stick with one. You can, you know, buy from all over the place, and you know, certain things may work better from certain one companies than other ones. Who knows? <laughs> True. Um, typically, I'll just um, pricing. Um, typically, to to get to figure out what the pricing is, you would put items into a list and then price that list. Um, mm. We do have the option where we can uh, set your account up with a price this title button so that on the title page you can just click uh, price this title and it mm. would show you what one unit of a title would cost you. Mm. So cool. if you open an account and that's something that you're interested in, you just need to let me know once we get you set up and I can in activate that, that for you. Mm -hmm. And that would take into account the discount that we have through the commission for the libraries, or is that just the it, basic price? It, it would. Um, the discounts are tied to an account. Uh, ah. Now, if you have processing set up on the account, that doesn't, doesn't take into account processing costs. Uh, right. It's just a straight material um, for purchasing one unit of that material. Mm -hmm. But it Makes would take sense. into account the discount. Right. Awesome. All right. Well, it doesn't look like anybody has typed in any questions they need to ask right now, and that's fine. Um, as Ken said, you can always contact him, and we do have here, I believe, if I scroll down, this is all the information about Ingram, is contact information here. There we go. 
um, yep. for Kevin and other people there. But if you want to talk to him, who we had here with us today, there is his email that you could um, reach out to him or 800 number with his extension there. Yep, so happy to, to talk to anybody. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much, Kevin. All right. So thank you, Kevin, for this. This is great. I'm hoping a lot of our libraries will feel a little more comfortable now after seeing and hearing um, about what they can do through your services. I think it's it made it much easier. <laughs> ah, cool. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. So as I said, with this is where the uh, information is for Ingram's deal on our website. Take a look at it there and any other ones we have. Um, that will wrap it up for today's show. And I'm going to pop back over here. And this is our page for today. Uh, the show is being has been archived and I just want to get back to will be on our website. This is our main page for Encompass Live, nlc.nebraska.gov slash Encompass Live. Also, if you uh, Google us, use your search engine of choice, Encompass Live is the only thing out there called this, so you'll come, you'll find our page. We have our upcoming shows here, but I was gonna show you where our archives are is at, right underneath, there's a link to our archive page. We have all of our recordings for the show. We have, if, there's a, if there are presentations or slides or anything like that included, we do include links to them on here. Otherwise, we have the archive recording. The most recent one will be at the top of the list. So today's show will be right up here, probably later this afternoon. We have a link to the recording um, that will go right to our YouTube channel where we have that. We do have a search feature here. If you're looking at any of our other, other older recordings, you can look for um, the entire history of the show or just most recent 12 months. Uh, this is 2018 is the 10th year of Encompass Live, so we have a lot of archives, um, but we do have them, and I'm going to scroll down here, close your eyes, don't want you getting dizzy, I'm going to scroll really fast to the bottom. We do have all 10 years of our archives here, so going back to January 2009 when we first started the show, so you will find some older information, historical information, outdated information, possibly services, programs maybe that don't exist anymore, but um, these are all here and they always will be here. We're librarians, that's what we do, we archive things, save things for posterity, so you can always search through all this. I'm going to scroll back to the top now. So, but if you are looking for something specific, you know, use the search here. Everything has a date so you can tell what year it was actually um, broadcast originally. So you'll know, oh, this is actually something from 2017, so it's good. Or this is something from 2010, so maybe I need to find some more recent info. Uh, but so today's archive will be here, as I said, probably later this afternoon. Uh, I want to get it done before the holiday tomorrow. So anyone who attended today or registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know that it's available and it will be also posted out to our various uh, communication uh, ways that we communicate. We have a mailing list, Twitter, Facebook, we'll post it all out on there. Um, so that will be for today's show. I uh, hope you join us next week when our topic is Web Junction, the learning place for libraries. Uh, Kendra Morgan, who is from Web Junction, will be with us again. She's been on the show before talking about it. Web Junction has workshops and webinars and courses, uh, resources for libraries. We have a deal with them through the Nebraska Library Commission also to offer this to libraries. So definitely join us to see what you can do for to um, other ways you can earn continuing education credits. Just learn more about anything you want to. Uh, also, Encompass Live is on Facebook. You'll see I've had links here to our Facebook page. Uh, I've got open over here. So if you are a big Facebook user, give us a like over there. We do post notices about different sessions. Here's one reminding people, log in for today's show. When our, uh, or, when our recordings are available, we post on here. Updates about any shows. So definitely give us a like on Facebook. If that is somewhere you get your information from, you'll get a couple of posts a week from us on there. <sighs> And that, other than that, that wraps it up for today's show. Thank you very much for joining us on this special Tuesday edition of Encompass Live. I will hope, hope we'll see you next time, and have a happy and safe 4th of July. Bye-bye. <laughs>